All right, we are live. Thanks for joining us for our noon live Bible study here at Lift Community Church. And um, we are doing the love languages. Uh, I hope that uh, this is going to be beneficial to you. Um, if you joined us last week, we talked about the first love language, which was words of affirmation. Today, we're going to talk about quality time. If your love language is quality time, or you know someone, or have someone in your life, that uh, quality time is their love language. We're going to talk about that today. Um, so, yeah, let's let's jump in. Um, I don't really have any announcements. Uh, I have one prayer request uh, for the end. Um, we are, I know that in terms of our life groups, I guess this is an announcement, but in terms of our life groups, if you haven't signed up for one, now's a good time. Um, the Thursday night group has switched to Wednesday night. I know this is confusing because at one point we had a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and then the groups have, um, some of them have taken breaks. Two of the groups have taken breaks, one, one disbanded. And so now we just have two groups. Um, we have Monday night and then uh, Wednesday night. So the Thursday group now meets on Wednesday. So if Wednesday night works out good for you, they are big, this week, start, oh, today is Wednesday, starting tonight, um, they are starting the, the new Praying with Paul study that we're working through. Uh, the Monday night group, we are all, um, last night, or Monday night was week three for us, and we'll be starting week four on Praying with Paul this next next week. But it's really good. I really encourage you to join a life group. This this prayer one is really good. Um yeah, I'm, I'm getting a lot out of it, so um, I encourage you to join a life group. And I'm, I'm really praying for our life groups at Lyft, um, so um, we'll, we'll get back up to speed here and be doing five life groups again um, shortly. So, right, let's pray and then start talking about quality time. Gracious God, we thank you so much for um, the gift of love. And we all express love and receive love differently. Uh, but we are all created in your good and holy and pleasing image of love. We are created in your image of love. You are the God who is love and the God of love. So we pray that we understand love languages better so that we can share love with those that we know. Um, and and uh, so that they feel loved by expressing to them the way that they like to receive love. And Lord, also that we understand our own love language so that we can receive love the way that you created us to receive love in um, our own unique way. And we pray and ask this all in Christ's name, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, all right, so quality time. First, let me just give a recap of what the love languages are. And um, if you haven't read it, this is the book we're using, Five Love Languages by Dr. Gary Chapman. And um, it's been around a long time. So you may already know this, and if it is, it's a hopefully it, it might be a refresher for you. Hey, Daniela, she joined us. <laughs> I love her. Um, uh, she's doing these posts, um, like uh, her master class in dating during the pandemic, and her posts are hilarious. I, I love them. Um, anyway, uh, so these are the love languages, the five love languages. Words of affirmation, which we talked about last week, which is um, if that's your love language, you love people to verbally or, or in writing express to you things that they are thankful for God to thankful to God for about you. So um, like it might be a handwritten note, you know, thank you so much for something that you did, um, or just a verbal appreciation. You know, that, so talking about our our um, praying with Paul life group, one of the things that, that really stood out to me really powerfully in week three of praying with Paul was how in Paul's, all of Paul's letters that he begins, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, Philippians, every single letter that Paul wrote, he begins it with, I thank God for you and your faith in God and how your faith is growing and your love uh, for God and others is growing. Like almost every letter he begins that way. And I was like, man, how well, how different would would life be? How different would um, our churches be if people said, "I thank God for for your faith. I thank God for your faith." And it's different than thanking God for um, you know something that someone has done 
thanking someone for a service that they've done, you know, something that they've done, which people who have love language words of affirmation, you can thank them for something that they did, and they'll receive that as love. Um, but uh, this is different. This is like, I thank God for your faith. Like, that's a little bit different. Um, and I, I, I just think that's really powerful. We need to do more of that in churches. I've made a, a commitment to, to text everybody in my, um, my life group and say, I thank God for you. And this is and, you know, how something about their faith is inspiring to me. Um, so I'm, I've made a commitment to do that. But uh, anyway, so words of affirmation is people expressing appreciation to you for, um, for who you are and for things that you've done. Quality time, which we're talking about today, is um, spending uh, undivided time with somebody. And there's two types, and we'll talk about them, but there's uh, quality conversation, and then there's quality activities, things that you do together. That's quality time. So like, let's take a walk together. Um, let's sit, sit and talk together about our day. Um, so that's quality time. Receiving gifts, not a lot of things there. Um, you know, just being given things that, not, you know, things that, that took thought or that are meaningful. It, it doesn't have to be a purchased gift. It can be a stone, you know, hey, I was walking and, you know, and saw this stone and um, made me think of you and for whatever reason. That, that's a meaningful gift. Like that's, that's someone if receiving gifts is their love language. They would, that would be very meaningful to them. Their love tank would be filled up. Acts of service is, um, hey, let me vacuum for you. Let me do the dishes for you. Let me take your car and, and wash it. You know, the, the, the person, if acts of service is how they receive love, then their love tank would be filled up if you do things for them. And then physical touch, which is simple things like just holding hands, um, you know, rubbing their back, um, you know, things like that. Uh, physical touch is um, my secondary love language. My first is words of affirmation. But so um, just having somebody rub my head is, is very soothing to me. When um, I remember distinctly uh, when I was in college, so I, you know, I was grown, but um, we were, it was me and my parents and we were making a long drive. I don't remember for what, but I just remember my mom sitting in the back seat with me and she invited me just to lay my head in her lap and she just kind of stroked my hair. I did have hair at one time. I still had hair, but that was really just like that, that filled my love tank because physical touch is my secondary love language. Just having somebody stroke my hair at that time. Bare head now, but that, that's, that's so someone, if they have physical touch as their love language, something like simple like that is very meaningful to them. All right, so those are the five love languages. And if, if any of those resonated with you, that might be your love language. You can go to um, just do a search for love language, the five love languages. And um, there's a free test you can take online to find out what your love language is, your first and secondary and, and so on. All right, um, as we talked about last week, God knows our love languages and God expresses um, um, God's love to us in the way that we want to receive love because God knows our love languages. And God also, um, and because God is love, um, expresses love um, uh, in, in all of the different ways, uh, all the different five love languages. God, um, God experiences those, God lives those, God breathes those, God is those things. Uh, so, and understands those things. All right, uh, so quality time. This is undivided attention. Uh, quality time is undivided attention. And what that means is like you, just because you're sitting there watching TV together, that's not quality time. Um, and if, if the person you're with, or if that's your love language, that's not gonna fill your love tank by just sitting watching TV together. Because what has your attention at that time is the TV. Or if you're sitting together on your on your devices, if you're scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, if you're watching TikTok videos, whatever it is you're doing, um, even if you're doing it together, the device has your attention and not the person, so they're they're not going to feel loved. So in order for them to feel loved, you have to set the device down, turn the TV off, you have to look at each other, and you have to engage each other and give each other your undivided attention, and that's how a person who has the love language quality time will feel loved is undivided attention. All right. Um, 
And the thing about that too is that um, you are giving that person your time. Um, and, and time is, um, you know, the old saying, time is money. It's, it's not. Time is, it's a part of your life. Because when you give somebody your undivided attention for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, um, you are giving them a part of your life that you can't get back. You can't get that time back, right? So you're saying to this person, my, my time, which is part of my life, is valuable, and I'm giving it to you as a gift, right? So think about it. If, if you know someone who has, quality time is their love language, you're literally saying to them, I'm giving you part of my life. It's valuable. It's meaningful. It means something. And that's how they receive it. Um, and, and so that's a great gift to give somebody, right? Is a part of your life when you give them your undivided time. So um, attention um, through time. So that's a great gift. And the first scripture we're going to look at is Genesis 2.18. So if you have your Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Uh, if you're on a device, you can you know scroll. You can look at whatever version of the Bible that you like. Uh, I'm going to use the New International Version, the NRSV. NIV is really good. I use that for years. Um, the message is great. I know it's really popular for people in my life group to use the message. Um, it's, a, it's a paraphrase, um, like the Living Bible is a paraphrase. And paraphrases are great. That's fine. Um, whatever works for you. But we're going to we're using the NRSV, and this is Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the human should be alone. I will make Adam a helper as his partner. All right, so it is not good. This is the first not good. You know, leading up to this, God has, has um, created the, the heavens and the earth. God has created all things. And, and consistently after God created it said, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. And then when God creates humanity, God says it was very good. Like everything God has done good. And suddenly it's like, oh, this is not good. This is not good that 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 man is alone. That human that humans are alone. That man or woman that they're not alone. This is not good, right? So quality time, right? That's the love language, right? It's not good to be alone. You want to be with somebody, have their undivided attention. Um, that's that's the first not good. Is quality time actually is be together, be together. All right. So. Um, I want to just real briefly talk about how God expresses the love language of quality time to us throughout history. Uh, one is obviously in the person of Jesus Christ, the incarnation. God, God sent Jesus, God's Son, part of the Trinity. God in the flesh came and dwelt with us, and so I mean, God's God spent quality time with us in Jesus. Right? God walked the dusty earth with us. God breathed our air. God felt our pain physically and emotionally, you know, in John, um, when uh, Jesus uh, raises Lazarus from the dead, he says, Jesus wept, you know, he felt our emotional pain. So, I mean, that's quality time, right? God being present with us and feeling things with us and giving us our undivided attention. And the scripture I want us to look at, uh, although the Jesus wept one would be a good one, we're going to look in the Gospel of John, but chapter 1, verse 14 and it says, And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory and the glory um, as of a father's only son. So um, God lived among us, right? God gave us God's undivided attention through quality time right here on earth with us, right? Now, you may be thinking, oh, well, Jesus is not here now. I'm by myself. You know, Jesus isn't physically present with me. Well, the third part of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. And we're going to look at Romans 8, verse 9. So turn to Romans 8, verse 9. Romans 8. Acts, chapter, we're going to go, the four, after the four Gospels, you have Acts, and then you have Romans. Romans 8, verse 9. And it says, But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. 
the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, I can't think of any greater example of quality time than God physically indwelling us, right? This is what the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans. God dwells within us. God dwells within us. That's quality time at its best, right? Now, if you're thinking, well, I don't feel like God's dwelling within me, well, then you need to spend quality time with God. Get access to the Spirit of God that is within you. Pray, you know, meditate. A simple thing you can do, spend 10 minutes every day meditating, just quietly sitting. Um, you know, this is the way that they taught us um, when I was in, in seminary, and, and we took a spirituality um, uh, in life and practice class, and is to sit on the ground um, in the lotus position if you can, or sit on a cushion if you can, but try and get both knees in contact with the ground, with the earth, be connected to the earth from which we are created, and be connected to the earth, and, and then close your eyes, concentrate on your breath, and try and let uh, all of the, the monkey mind, the things that are going through your mind all the time, just let those cease and, and just concentrate on your breath and meditate. And be in the presence of God. Sense the indwelling of the Spirit within you as, as you meditate. And get, get connected to God. And um, that's quality time with God. That's quality time of the Holy Spirit of God within you. And it's amazing things. Amazing the things that God will reveal to you during that time if you spend that quality time with God. Because God's already spending quality time with you because God is indwelling within you. All right. Um, Oh, well, the other thing you can do, do a prayer walk. You know, that's a good way to, to access the, the Holy Spirit within you. Um, spend quality time with God is take a walk and pray. And that's also a good way to spend quality time with the people that you love and, and that love you um, is take a walk. I did a prayer walk with a, a couple of the guys from my life group. And we did a three-hour prayer walk um, around White Rock Lake. It was really powerful. I mean, not only did I feel connected to God and, and the Spirit of God within me, I felt more connected to um, my brothers in Christ, you know, the guys from, um, from church. So, um, yeah, take, take a prayer walk. All right, so let's get down to quality time if this is your love language. Um, there are two things, two things. There's quality conversation and quality activities. So if quality time is your love language, there's quality conversation and quality activities that will fill your love tank. And um, if you know someone, if that's not your love language, but you have someone in your life that you love, um, that you know this is their love language, then the, the way to fill their love tank, or if this is your love language to fill your love tank, is you want quality conversation and quality conversation. Uh, conversation and quality activities. What is quality conversation? Glad you're asking questions. All right, good. So um, quality conversation means that you may maintain eye contact. So you give that person your undivided attention and you maintain eye contact. And this will help you from being distracted while you're listening to what they're saying. So it is maintain eye contact. Number two, uh, don't do anything else but listen to what they're saying. So don't be looking at your phone, don't be reading the newspaper, don't be reading a book, don't be gazing off into the distance. Maintain eye contact and listen to what they're saying. Don't do anything else that they're doing. Um, also, when you're listening, number three is listen for their feelings. How are they feeling? So that you can respond to how they're feeling. Um, you know, if they're expressing um, a frustration, man, you, can, you know, you can respond with, Man, I, I feel your pain. You know, I feel your frustration. That's I'm really sorry that that happened. Like, you respond to their feeling, to how they're feeling. Number four, watch their body language. You know, if if they start sending you signals that they're upset, like crossing their arms or they're furrowing their brows, they're looking at you talking. Um, they may not be receiving from you quality conversation. So that's a cue to you that you need to. Give them your undivided attention, maintain eye contact, really engage with what they're telling you. So watch their body language. And number five, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Let them finish their conversation. Let them finish what they're telling you. And if you are truly actively listening, right, maintain eye contact, listen to what they're saying, responding appropriately, um, then uh, they're going to feel loved. Um, and you're not going to interrupt them because you're going to be engaged in what they're saying. But that's quality conversation. 
quality activities. These are the things that you do together. Um, so this is learning to share in the experience the in the experiences of the things that the other person enjoys doing. So say for instance, like you love to go to the state fair, but your friends don't. Well, if they truly love you, they are going to engage in that activity because they know it's something that you enjoy. Um, and, and so if, if quality time is your love language, then you part of it is you are going to have to say, hey, look, this is the way that I feel loved is when you spend quality time with me. So I really appreciate it if you would do this activity with me. And if the person truly cares about you and loves you, then they're going to engage in that experience. And they can learn to enjoy it too. You know, I, my ex loved to drive around and look at houses. That was not my thing. It really wasn't. But I did it with him because he enjoyed it. And, and actually the funny thing is, is that I eventually did learn to enjoy that. Um, not that I do it now, um, even though we're not together, but our daughter, um, I do actually, when we're driving places, say to her, oh, look at that house. I really like that house. You know, and, and she's like, well, what do you like about it? And I'm like, oh, and I'll tell her and I'll say, well, what do you like about it? And she'll tell me. I mean, so, you know, we, we kind of share that in common because she probably does that with her other dad, right? Um, so uh, you can learn to appreciate things if you in, uh, that the other person likes to do if quality time is, is their love language. Um, if you approach it knowing that you are filling their love tank. And so here's some guidelines for quality activities for people in your life that have quality time as their love language. Or if it's your love language and the person that you're with is not, that's not their love language, then you can express this together um, so that you, that they know that they want to be you, so that they know that this is how you feel up. Okay, number one, um, at least one of you wants to do it. So it has to be something that at least one of you enjoys doing. The other person has to be willing to participate um, and that both of you know why you're doing it. And that's the key is, is that if the other person says, hey, I don't really want to do that, but, but that I'm willing to do it because I love you. So they, they know that it's an expression of love to you. Um, or vice versa, if you're like, hey, I really, I really love doing this. Will you please do it with me? Um, because it's a way for you to express your love for me. You need to communicate. Just communicate that. Um, and, and then you can enjoy doing those things together um, eventually. You know, and it just, it's, it's an expression of love for one another. Um, and you know, if you both enjoy doing it together, then that's even better. If you both enjoy whatever the activity is. But that's quality activities. All right, so a couple of examples in Scripture, um, and it looks like we're going to be perfect on time here. A couple of examples in Scripture. So I wanted to give an example of what quality conversation in Scripture might look like, and, and particularly with God. So we're going to look at, at Genesis 18 and uh, verses 16 and 17, and then jump down to 23 and 24. So Genesis 18, 16 and 17, and 23 and 24, if you have your Bible. Uh, then the men set out from there, and the men here is, is the Trinity. So this is um, what most Christians uh, believe is, um, was uh, a, an epiphany, a, you know, um, an appearance of God um, in, in person uh, to Abraham. And um, so the men here refers to the Trinity. There's three men who appear to um, Abraham at the Oaks of Mamir, and... Um, and so they're setting out to leave, and they say to, uh, and Abraham, it says, and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? So this is when um, the cries of, of the, the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah have come up to the Lord, and, and God has decided that something needs to be done. And so he's like, well, should I tell Abraham what I'm going to do? And he decides, yeah, I should, because I have this relationship with Abraham. And so God engages in this quality conversation with Abraham. And if we jump down now to 23 and 24, it says, Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive? 
uh, for the 50 righteous who are in it. And so this kind of negotiation goes back and forth between God and Abraham um, until God you know, whittles it down to just one righteous person and, and actually his, his nephew Lot is, um, escapes the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. But um, uh, God engaged Abraham in this quality conversation where they had each other's undivided attention and they're negotiating sort of what's going on. So that's an example of quality conversation and what that might look like in Scripture, between, particularly between God and um, Abraham. Then the next one we're going to look at for quality activity is Luke 24. And, you know, this is, and this is the uh, walk to Emmaus. And um, walking, especially during this pandemic, a lot of people have been out walking, and especially when the weather's nice. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. You can, and, you know, and, and for somebody who has quality time as their love language, take a walk, you know. And bonus, if their secondary love language is, is physical touch, you can hold hands. Uh, you know, that's free. And that's going to fill their love tank. And it, it does you good because um, walking is, is good for you health-wise. Um, there's been studies that show walking actually um, uh, helps uh, spur creativity in the brain. A spark creativity in the brain. So, I mean, walking has all kinds of benefits. Um, so, if, if you if you have someone in your life that's that love lang quality time is their love language, or that's your love language, man, take a walk. It's free, and you get so many benefits out of it. All right, the walk to Emmaus, Luke twenty four verses thirteen through seventeen. Now, on that same day, two of them were going uh, to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still looking sad. They were sad because Jesus had been crucified. Um, and they don't recognize that Jesus is standing there with them. But this to me is like the perfect example of quality time. So not only is Jesus walking with them, but he's like, what are you talking about? You know, let me join you in conversations. <laughs> it's quality activity, quality conversation with the Lord of the universe, right? Um, can't, it doesn't get any better than that. And seven miles, it says Jerusalem to Emmaus was seven miles. Um, you know, if you're walking at a nice pace, um, that would take you roughly about two hours and 20 minutes, right? You can get a lot of good quality time and quality conversation in during two hours and 20 minutes if you have each other's undivided attention as you're walking and talking. So to me, that's like the perfect example of the love language quality time is the walk to Emmaus. All right, well, I hope I hope that was beneficial. Uh, next week, we will look at the love language of receiving gifts. Receiving gifts will be the one we talk about next week. Let's close in prayer. Um, we have one prayer request. It's for a couple that um, they're not actually members of Lyft. Um, but a member of Lyft referred them to our church. Um, they're going through some marital strife, and they are um, trying to make a decision about the future of their relationship. They're hoping, you know, praying that God can bring healing, and if not, that there can be a um, conscious uncoupling, their words, conscious uncoupling. So um, we want to pray for their relationship. Um, so let's, let's pray and, and remember them. Gracious God, we thank you for this uh, new live Bible study, this time to gather together to understand ourselves better, to understand um, how we want to receive love, and to understand how those that we love might wish to receive love so that we can show them that we love them. Lord, we lift up to you this couple. We're talking about love, and they are struggling with their love for one another. I pray that they will understand each other's love languages, that um, healing might take place in, in their relationship. Um, Lord, I, 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 yeah, I, that's my prayer for them, is that they would understand one another's love languages and, their, um, and how each loves to express love and to receive love, and that they might rediscover that for each other. Um, and, and I pray this all in, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, I thank you so much for joining us. We kept it under 30 minutes today, uh, which is always great. And um, yeah, look forward to next week, and we'll talk about receiving gifts as a love language. Be blessed. Have a great week. Have a great day. And love you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll see each other in worship soon.
Talk to you later. Bye.